As a species, humans have populated almost every corner of the earth. We've developed technologies and customs which shape the world we live in. The idea of natural selection, or survival of the fittest, seems to make sense in Stone Age times when we were fighting over scraps of meat, but does it still apply now? Are humans and a technological society still evolving? Before we answer these questions, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are uploaded. Much of the beauty of the concept of evolution lies in its elegant simplicity. According to Charles Darwin's grand theory, the characteristics of populations or species can change over time and heritable variation exists. And if there are differences in reproductive success or survival rates, therefore in response to environmental pressures, the frequency of heritable characteristics will change from one generation to the next, and evolution by natural selection will take place. In 2000, the paleontologist Stephen J. Gold famously declared that there's been no biological change in humans in 40,000 or 50,000 years, suggesting that evolution in humans is imperceptibly slow or has stopped altogether. The British naturalist and broadcaster Sir David Attenborough concurred, even arguing that birth control and abortion have contributed to a halt in physical evolution among humans. We stopped natural selection as soon as we started being able to rear 90-95% of our babies that are born. We're the only species that have put a halt to natural selection, of its own free will, as it were. He told the British magazine, the Radio Times in 2013, adding that our species has instead ensured our continued survival through accelerated cultural evolution. Stopping natural selection is not as important or depressing as it might sound, because our evolution is now cultural. We can inherit a knowledge of computers or television, electronics, airplanes, and so on. Professor Steve Jones, a geneticist at University College of London, said, In Shakespeare time, only about one English baby in three made it to be 21. All those deaths were raw material for natural selection. Many of those kids died because of the genes they carried. But now, about 99% of all the babies born make it to that age. Natural selection, if it hasn't stopped, has at least slowed down, says Jones. But although in the development world today, almost everyone lives long enough to pass on their genes, many of us choose not to. Some people have three children, and some people have none. So natural selection may be working in a different way. Much of the story is on our genes, and the sequence of the human genome has helped unlock the answers. By comparing the genes of people from all around the world, scientists can see how different we all are, and therefore how much we have evolved apart from each other since our species first appeared. Skin color is the most obvious way we have evolved apart. But there are other examples. We're living records of our past, says Dr. Paris Sabati, a geneticist at Harvard University, and so we can look at the DNA of individuals from today and get a sense of how they all came to be this way. Another area of recent evolution is how our metabolism has changed to allow us to digest some things that we could not in the past. The most obvious example of this is lactose, the sugar in milk. Some 10,000 years ago, before humans started farming, no one could digest this beyond a few years of age. But today, the rate of lactose tolerance in different parts of the world is a clue to the different histories of farming across the globe. While 99% of Irish people are lactose tolerant, in Southeast Asia, where there's very little tradition of dairy farming, the figure is less than 5. In the present, genetic studies have demonstrated that humans are still evolving. To investigate which genes are undergoing natural selection, researchers looked at the data produced by the International HapMap Project and the 1000 Genomes Project. Scientists have found that the majority of genes that have undergone recent evolution are associated with smell, reproduction, brain development, skin pigmentation, and immunity against pathogens. When infectious diseases became more common in human populations, perhaps because populations grew in size and pathogens were able to spread more rapidly, people with a genetic advantage were more likely to survive and reproduce. As a result, these genetic advantages were selected for, allowing more people to survive and fight disease. In some cases, a genetic advantage resulted from losing the full activity of a gene. Infection Disease The strongest evolutionary pressure of all comes from infectious diseases. Millions of people die from infectious diseases each year, particularly in the poorest regions of the world. People who are able to survive infections are more likely to pass on their genes to their offspring. However, genes that produce an advantage against one disease may not produce an advantage when faced with another. HIV Susceptibility HIV is a modern-day driving force for human evolution. In certain parts of South Africa, nearly half of women are infected with the virus. In a study in Durban, Dr. Philip Goulder and colleagues from the University of Oxford found that women with a certain combination of variants in a human leukocyte antigen, HLA-B27, were better of clearing HIV infection than those with the HLA-A or HLA-C genetic subtypes. HLA is produced by the major histocompatibility complex, MHC, 
are by far the most variable region of human genome and are an essential part of the immune system. Infected mothers with HIV-protective HLEB genes were more likely to survive HIV infection and pass on these genes to their children. It has been proposed that the relatively low level of HIV in Western Europe is aided by a common variation in a co-receptor for the HIV virus particle, CCR5. This variant protects people almost completely against HIV and is found in 13% of Europeans. However, it is extremely rare in other populations around the world, including Africans. The origin of the variant in humans dates back thousands of years ago, well before the AIDS epidemic, which only dates from the late 1970s. It is therefore likely that this variant may have been selected because it protects against other viral or bacterial infections. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to smash the like button, share this video with your friends, and tell us what you want to see next in the comment section down below.